night doing maintenance out here at a site and we have a condenser temperature sensor failure condenser coil condenser coil temp one sensor failure all right this is our model number it's a newer unit 2021 the company i work for installed this unit a couple years ago so we're going to take a look and see first we're going to find this sensor and we're going to test it we're going to see pretty sure it's probably a 10k sensor we're going to test it and we're going to see if, we, if it's bad and if it's bad we're going to replace it so let's find this sensor and see what's going on with it. Well, they did us no favors on the placement of these sensors. I had to, I didn't take this all the way off because I didn't want to take the door off. So I took all the screws, all those screws out of this panel and pulled it out. And we got a couple sensors here. We got a sensor here. And we got a sensor back there. So we're gonna test both these sensors and see what we got. See if they're bad, if their readings are okay. And then we're gonna go from there. All right, guys, I got the sensor out. And uh, don't make fun of my meter leads. I just broke one and had to improvise. Apparently I didn't have a spare black one, just a spare red one. So <laughs> there we are. Okay, so on this sensor, we're reading 245 ohms. It is 71 degrees. And according to this chart here, at 70 degrees, we should be 11,883 ohms. I'll hover over this. Oops. I'll hover over this so if anybody wants to pause it and take a look. This is for any 10K 10k ohm sensors all york sensors are 10k ohm and a lot of sensors in this field are 10k you could you have 20k sometimes and some other ones in mini splits but most of the time you're going to run into 10k so at 70 degrees outside we should have or 70 degrees we should have 11,883 ohms we're 71 degrees right now and we're at 243 ohms. So it's safe to say this sensor is bad. Now I have another one in here. That's sensor number two. I'm gonna pull that one and test it and see where we're at with that one. All right, sensor number two is at 11.5K, so that's 11,500. That's right about where we're supposed to be. At 71 degrees. Now I left that one in place because I didn't want to disturb it because I know nothing's wrong with that one. But at 70 degrees, we're supposed to have 11.8. We're at 71 and we're 11.49. So I know that sensor is good. All right, so let's see about getting that other sensor out and replacing it. I don't think I have one on the truck, but let's see if I have something I can use. All right, so I do have a 10K sensor. It is for an outdoor temperature sensor. I'm wondering if it will work. But we need it to work. If I can strap this thing in. strap that to the pipe to get them by if not I can probably steal one I can steal the outdoor temperature sensor 
off the one that's on the unit now and put this outdoor temperature sensor in its place. All right, so what I did was I took the outdoor 10K temperature sensor and installed it in the condenser coil temperature sensor spot temporarily until I get the correct parts in. So that went there and then the Honeywell 10K sensor that I had, I installed in the outdoor temperature spot. So this will be here temporarily until I get the other temperature sensor in. So let's take a look now. Our fault light is not flashing anymore and we're not getting a error on our digital readout. So we're gonna fire this baby up, make sure everything comes on and I think we might've fixed this one until we get our parts in. So if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna try to do some more videos like this. I run into all kinds of stuff in this industry every day and I'm gonna start posting it and see where it takes us. So that's gonna be it for this one. I'll catch you on the next one.